Hey guys, today we're driving the 2022 Subaru BRZ, and yes, we have a six-speed automatic. We couldn't get a manual from Subaru this week, but I figure some people will probably want to buy an automatic, and they should know what it's like to drive the automatic. So we're going to be doing a review on that. We're going to walk you around this new BRZ too, show you what it looks like inside and out. I've spent the last few days in this car and have a pretty good idea of what it's like to live with. As many of you know, I had a 2014 Subaru BRZ for six years, put 60,000 miles on it, drove it all year round, even in the winter, which is uh, seemingly what happened today in Michigan. Uh, we just are still on the Michelin Primacy summer tires. So we'll try to kind of manage traction in this drive today. We do have a little bit more power in this new BRZ. We have a 2.4 liter boxer four cylinder making 228 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque. That torque number is really the important one because it makes it early on down low throughout the rev range. We actually have a linear torque band in this car and the automatic no longer feels completely neutered and sluggish and miserable. Um, it's just kind of a mediocre transmission in a fantastic sports car chassis. So we'll talk more about that on the drive. And yes, I did say sports car. I think this BRZ is just about as much of a sports car as you can buy in the modern vehicle landscape. It is such a great chassis. It's lightweight. We have a, look at this, a mechanical handbrake that you use with your hand, not with the, just a little electronic button. So you can do, uh, you know, skids and drifts and little 180s to impress the ladies. Um, <laughs> I think this is just a fantastic little car and uh, I'm very excited to share some of the changes and differences that I've noticed on this this week. So first, just sitting in the driver's seat, we have a great driving position, a kind of a carryover steering wheel from the uh, previous generation refresh. So a slightly smaller diameter wheel. We have some buttons here to control our uh, lane keep assist, our adaptive cruise control. This has Subaru's camera-based eyesight system. You only get that in the automatic, um, which I'm actually kind of thankful for because if I had a manual car, I'm not sure I would want it. Uh, it's a decent system. It works okay, but um, you know, in a sports car, does it really belong? Nah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, gone are a few features. So we do not have uh, the adjustable headlight height anymore on this side. And Subaru has also done away with the third brake light in the middle of the rear windshield, which actually gives us much better rearward visibility. Check out this view out the rear view mirror. Pretty clear, pretty clean. And overall in the Subaru BRZ, I have excellent visibility. Um, pretty thin A-pillars, nice mirrors. I just love sitting in this thing. Fantastic driving position. Let's walk you around and show you what it looks like. This is painted in the same silver that my old car was, so I do have a little bit of an attachment to this color. This BRZ just seems to be the perfect size sports car. It fits so easily in the garage. The inside is really nicely packaged and put together. You still get quite a bit of room, and there is a bunch of space in the trunk too. Let's see if we can pop this here. Here we go. We do get a little bit less of an opening uh, in this trunk space. It seems to be a little bit taller, but maybe not as wide. I could not fit my mountain bike in this new BRZ the other day with the front wheel off, whereas I used to do that all the time on a weekly basis. I used to put my bike in the back of my BRZ pretty much constantly, and it doesn't look like I can in this new one. So kind of a bummer. Uh, I would really like to get these cars, a new car and an old car side by side at some point and really compare where the opening is different because from photos it's just kind of a little bit hard to tell. Unfortunately we do not get a spare tire even though I'm sure you could probably squeeze one back there and there might be an option at the dealer to fit one. There is even the screw down there to bolt one down. Um, it would be nice to get a spare tire in your BRZ but I guess in the name of cost savings or weight savings they have not offered it for the 22 model year. Same fantastic rear seats that you can fold down and turn into a very spacious shelf. You can put tires back there, wheels for a track day. Uh, not that you should really be doing track days in an automatic BRZ, but that's okay. More on that later. Um, I do really like these seats. They're slightly more aggressively bolstered for the 22 model year. The cloth seats in this premium base model uh, are really good. They keep you really well supported in the car and the grip your cloth uh, has a little bit more traction on your body I think. 
not really much is going on in the back seat. They're pretty tight. Uh, you could throw a child seat back there or a kid back there, but for adults, it's not really that usable of a space, unfortunately. I've always been comparing the BRZ and the GR86 with looks, and you know, I think I prefer the front end of the GR86, especially because the BRZ has these two holes in the front end for a front license plate. And in Michigan, we don't need front plates, so we just have this looking at us here. Uh, kind of awkward, whereas the GR86, that would be something that would be done in at the dealership uh, if that's applicable to your state. One thing I really do like about this base model BRZ over the GR86 is Subaru's choice of a 17 inch wheel. I feel like these wheels look much better than the entry level 17 inch wheels on the GR86. Um, 215 45R17 tires. I am a strong believer in that the 17 inch wheel and tire setup on the BRZ and GR86 is the most fun wheel and tire setup between this and the 18s. The 18s have more grip and you'll be faster on the track, but the way this kind of moves around under hard cornering at the limit is just a beautiful, beautiful thing. You can really enjoy this chassis on these tires. And even though they are the same tires that were on the previous generation, BRZ and GR86, there's so much more grip here because they've made improvements to the suspension and the chassis in this car. Let's take a look under the hood. So pretty much everything looks the same under here. We have the same location for the battery, the air intake, of course gone is the sound tube. Subaru and Toyota have replaced that with a speaker that pipes noise in or plays noise in the cabin. Um, we'll listen to that a little bit later. And now we have an oil cooler, which is very similar to the oil cooler that I put on my BRZ. Seems to do a pretty good job keeping track temps lower than before. And we also have a nice gauge that shows us our actual oil temperature. Uh, useful stuff for track days if you're gonna be doing that in your BRZ. Pretty easy car to work on, lots of accessibility to a lot of accessories. Spark plugs are a little bit of a challenge. You have to kind of jack the engine up a few inches, but you really only have to do those about every 60,000 miles. And uh, otherwise, a pretty easy and fun car to work on. This BRZ is rated for 30 miles to the gallon on the highway and 21 miles to the gallon in the city. I haven't done enough driving in it this week to really kind of verify those numbers. But I imagine the previous gen BRZ was so efficient on the highway that you could beat those numbers pretty easily. So let's look around this interior a little bit more. We have a new infotainment with Apple CarPlay and a base audio system that actually sounds great. It's a huge improvement from the previous generation car and uh, I believe there's also a premium audio offered in the limited BRZ. This isn't that, but it still sounds great. It's much better. Um, I would be perfectly happy with this audio system in my BRZ. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, a pretty nice responsive touchscreen. I like how it kind of comes out a little bit closer to the driver. It's really easy to reach and that we have physical buttons on the side here for our home button, our phone, our apps, stuff like that. There's a bunch of configurability here with the settings. You can configure, you know, beep sounds, call volume, uh, different phone settings, and of course a bunch of different driver profiles that you can customize to whoever is going to be driving the car. This is all stuff that you can just kind of play around with and set it and forget it once you get your car. Everything else though is super accessible. We have tons of physical controls and buttons. Of course we have this uh, digital center display now that will change depending on what drive mode you're in. So if you're just in kind of a normal drive mode, it'll have a linear round tachometer with a speedo in the middle. You've got your oil temperature gauge right here, your battery volt meter, and then your coolant temperature with, along with your fuel level right there. Uh, I believe this is a 13.4 gallon fuel tank. You have a couple different drive modes, sport, snow, and then if you hold this button right here, you can go into track mode, which will change the gauge cluster into this kind of strange non-linear display where zero to 4,000 RPM doesn't really do much, but once you get above four to five, it'll show you those revs right in the rev range, which is super useful if you have a manual transmission. Um, not so useful with this automatic because the paddle shifters are pretty, uh, more on that later. <laughs> track mode is fun though. It gives you a little bit more 
you know, room to play with the traction control system. You can slide this thing around a little bit. And then if you're at low speeds, uh, you can turn traction completely off, traction stability control completely off. You can hold the traction control button and that will also put you in the track mode view. So if you hold it and holding, holding, there we go, we're back in track mode. And of course, lane keep assist, collision, mitigation, all that stuff will turn off, which is kind of nice to see right there. So if you're doing a track day, that's what you want. We have physical controls for our climate right here, very easy to adjust. You can change which direction the air is pointing with this mode button, defrost, buttons very accessible. Um, all this is just so easy and intuitive, I love it. Unfortunately, these don't slide, but in my experience, these visors provide a good amount of blockage. A pretty straightforward interior, a very familiar space, just nicely evolved and updated in this new 2022 BRZ. All right, let's take this thing for a drive. We'll see what it's like on the road. I'll show you guys the reverse camera here. A little bit of an upgrade, nicely centered. We have turning lines, which is great. Before we get started with today's drive, I would like to thank our sponsor for this video, Phantom Wallet. This is my daily wallet. It's a well-engineered product that I really have enjoyed using the last year or so. This is the Phantom R, it's their higher-end model. You can bolt on a number of different attachments to the back. This is the key holder attachment, and uh, I really like this because it kind of combines everything that I need out of my wallet. I can hold my keys, I can have a money clip on the other side that I bolt on, hold some cash, and I can fan out all my cards like this. There are a number of different finishes, color choices, card capacities, pretty much customizable to anything that you need. Check them out at phantomwallet.com and use the code TOFER for 10% off your order. All right, so let's get some driving impressions on this six-speed automatic transmission. So for the most part, when you're just driving this thing around normally, it acts like a normal automatic transmission. It's always gonna upshift to the tallest gear to try to be as fuel efficient as possible. Its shifts are a little bit rough, and then once it warms up, it smooths out a bit more. The paddle shifters are pretty responsive, which is good. And this is just in normal mode. So if you put it into sport mode, it will, in automatic, it'll downshift under hard braking, which is nice. But it's just not a refined automatic transmission. Even in manual mode, it can be a little bit frustrating and then it doesn't give you downshifts when it really should. Gearing's a little bit too tall also. Second gear tops out at, I don't know, 65 miles an hour, which is considerably higher than it is in the manual transmission car. And if you want to see what this automatic is like on a racetrack, I do have some track driving videos in the GR86. This is not the transmission you want on track. It's not snappy or quick or responsive or engaging like a dual clutch is. It's a little bit disappointing and really where most of that disappointment lies is in lack of control with your gears. Um, and that is a lot of this. So you're cruising, you think you're about ready to downshift, and it just, it doesn't give it to you until it can rev to a maximum of 6,000 RPM. Let's just do a launch here. We'll put it into sport mode. Traction control off. It's still quick, I'll give it that. One nice thing about this automatic transmission is that it no longer feels too slow like the previous generation BRZ did in automatic form. to see it automatically downshifting in sport mode. Let's 
drive it around a little bit more in manual. And another thing, look at this. They completely got the shift direction wrong down here. It should be forward to downshift, back to upshift, just like a sequential transmission should be. There we go. You do have to come to a, almost a complete stop to turn off traction control. First, this non-linear gauge cluster is a little bit strange to get used to, but chances are you're not going to be in track mode or with traction control off all the time when you're driving this car, so I can see the advantage to having it when you're kind of keeping the revs up and you want to see how high your RPM is at, but it's a little bit odd to live with sometimes. think this BRZ sounds. I'm still not quite sold on the engine note. It's a bit digital. It's really loud. It would be nice for Subaru to include a setting in the menu to turn the, the speaker sound enhancement off. In manual mode you can Bounce off the rev limiter. 67 in second gear. Yikes. So that is nice. If you're in, in drive, in sport mode, it will automatically upshift into the next gear, whereas manual will hold your gear. That's good. I still think, however, that if you want an automatic sports car, you should buy the 8-speed automatic base 2-liter Toyota Supra. Problem solved. Otherwise, I love this car. I love this chassis. It's so communicative. It really has a just a light, joyous nature to the way it handles. There's not a lot of body roll here like there maybe is in the Miata. It's a little bit more predictable and a little bit more grown up, but the added power with this new generation BRZ really helps you kind of enjoy the extent at which Subaru and Toyota have gone to develop this chassis. And it really, you get more enjoyment out of this car because you can really use the power to adjust the angle and you can throw little slides in here and there. Not as much with this automatic because the gearing is a little bit too tall, but with a six-speed manual car, this is an absolute joy to drive. It's kind of the perfect sports car formula. It really kind of does all the things to satisfy you as a driver. Brake pedal feels fantastic. We've got a really nice uh, positive engagement, a little bit more bite from the brakes this year too. This is the right formula. If you want a good driver's car that you can just enjoy and thrash around in and kind of grow and learn as a driver, this BRZ is probably the best option on the market. And it's practical, and it's comfortable, and it's well-priced. like on the highway. So to engage cruise control, we have to turn traction and control back on. And it, you have to have sports mode off too. So it'll cancel sport mode to engage the Subaru EyeSight system. I've gone into the menus and turned off all the beeps with the Subaru EyeSight system, which I really like. You can, you can do that. 
You can skip five mile an hour increments very easily by holding up and down on this cruise control stock. Old school Toyota cruise control stock down here works great. You can adjust your following distance very easily. You can switch between radar guided cruise and traditional cruise just by holding this button right here, which is very nice. It does a pretty good job of passing slower vehicles, accelerating when you put your turn signal on. So that's great. And the lane keep assist has been engaged most of the time that I've been driving this car this week. And I will say, I haven't needed to go in and turn it off. I haven't felt the need to because it's a very unintrusive system. It'll pretty much only yell at you when you're getting really close or on top of the line. And it's just a subtle beep and you can adjust the volume of those beeps, which is really nice. We'll show you how fast we pass slower traffic here. Not touching anything. This is the car accelerating on its own. It does a pretty good job. I don't feel like I'm holding up this Fiesta behind me. Wind noise is kept to a minimum on the highway in this new BRZ. It's pretty quiet in here. I'm very comfortable in these seats. Pretty much these are the same seats from the previous generation, just with more bolstering. And once I did a 3,000 mile road trip with my BRZ and I was a very happy camper the whole time. Add in the extra sound deadening, slightly less wind, tire, road noise, and this BRZ is just that much more comfortable on the highway. Pretty quick to downshift too when you want it to. I am pleased to report that the Subaru EyeSight system in this BRZ is pretty good. It does a nice job. I haven't had too many issues with it this week. I've left it on when I'm cruising. That is an advantage to the automatic, but do you really want your sports car, your BRZ, to drive itself? Nah. Unless if you live in a city like LA or where there's a bunch of traffic then I could, I could see the case for wanting an automatic, but if you're gonna drive this car and enjoy it and really get the whole experience here, you gotta go for the manual. Let's put us back into sport mode. throttle response in sport mode. The throttle becomes less linear and tip-in becomes a bit more aggressive. I do like the transmission programming a little bit more in sport mode than, of course, just normal automatic. Putting it into track mode will not change the shift character, so that'll really kind of only be the traction control. You have to put it into sport mode for the transmission to act in a sporty manner. Uh, it's just a little bit sloppy, that's all. <laughs> fantastic steering feel in this new BRZ. I just love the way this chassis just seems to kind of pivot around the central point right behind the driver. It's so balanced and so predictable. But there's just a little bit enough of an edge to this car to keep it exciting and engaging. Sport mode, manual.
we get some cool new menus here on the left so we can see our tire pressure now which is great a G meter the torque band lap timers your music that you're playing your safety systems what's engaged lane departure warning you can enable enable disable that go into eyesight settings and of course we get our battery voltage meter oil temperature MPGs trip distance all that stuff So how can we sum up the 2022 Subaru BRZ Premium with the six-speed automatic? I think I've pretty much said everything about the automatic that I wanted to. You guys get the idea. Just get the manual. It's an easy fix. Um, no excuses. Just get the manual. No, nope, not even that one. Get the manual. Um, <laughs> otherwise, this is such a great sports car. I, I really like the formula that Subaru has stuck with. I'm not sure I like the way it sounds, but again, that's also a fix. You can go in and disable that speaker. You can cut the wire. You can remove it and burn it in a trash can if you don't like it. Um, I think some people will think it sounds okay. I'm still a little bit torn on whether the Super BRZ sounds different from the GR86. I think they're pretty much the same. Um, anyway, it would be nice for Subaru to include in the future a setting in the menu to turn off the speaker or sound enhancement in this car. It's just a little bit, I think, artificial and digital sounding. Otherwise, this is the BRZ that we have known and grown to love. It is just a little bit nicer on the inside, a little bit more fine-tuned. I don't think they've gone too tech-focused, too digital with this car. It still feels analog. It still feels engaging. And it's just a nicer place to be. For thirty grand. this is just a fantastic car. I, uh, I would get one of these in a heartbeat. If uh, I wanted another BRZ, I think I'm ready for something a little bit crazier and a little bit faster now. But this is a very tempting option because it kind of does everything. And uh, you can really grow with this car. You can drive it and enjoy it. And it'll be reliable. It'll serve you for miles. And this new 2.4 liter boxer engine is just fantastic because it finally gives us the power that we always wanted. And the torque that this car deserves to really get the most out of this chassis. So... The automatic isn't as bad as I thought it was after, you know, maybe some track sessions that I've experienced this BRZ in. On the road, it's okay. It gets the job done. But it, I think, really does suck half the fun out of this car. So I'm just going to leave it at that. If you want an automatic, go for it. The more sports cars on the road, the better. The more people who buy these cars, the better. And if you just can't do the, uh, the manual for whatever reason, that's on you. But hopefully this gives you an idea of what the automatic is like to drive. Um, I think we're going to just wrap things up there. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been um, fun to experience a BRZ again. Can't wait to get behind the wheel of a six-speed manual. But until then, hopefully this will hold some of you over. And if you haven't already, check out some of my GR86 videos. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to stick around for a sound system test, Feel free to do so. We'll test this base audio system once we're done walking around the car. But uh, if that's all you want to see, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned on the Windy Road Magazine YouTube channel for more videos on this BRZ. We'll do a day drive, a night drive, and uh, all the usual content.
do appreciate how quickly this infotainment starts up. So we'll go into our sound test playlist. Really nice steering wheel controls for volume and track selection. A volume knob right here. Definitely a brighter sound system than the previous gen BRZ. A little bit easier to hear, a little bit clearer. Again, this is still just the premium, not the limited with the premium audio. But it sounds pretty good in my opinion. It's definitely a big improvement and add in the fact that this is less road, wind, tire noise. It helps. Alright, hopefully that gives you guys a pretty good idea of what this sounds like.